Hi, we are here at C Gallery with my beautiful friend Rachel. Hi. Rachel has a show, show at the gallery and I came to visit her and to ask her a lot of questions about the gorgeous work that we're seeing now. So I'm just going to give you a glimpse at everything so you could take it in. It's so beautiful, it's so happy, but not too happy, just perfect, perfect balance of life. Wow, look at this. And I want to ask Rachel all uh, questions about what she does, how she does it. Wow. Rachel, is that your first solo show? Of uh, abstraction, yes. Yeah? Yes. What was your, what did you do before abstraction? I, well, in terms of the solo show or in terms of the work in general? In your work in general. Dirt work in general. The body of work before the abstraction was actually body of equine work. Yeah. And that's when my last solo show was. I had it in Casa de Campo in the Dominican Republic. So what made you go such different direction? It, the abstraction actually links back to my work that was postgraduate work. And um, the, the event that occurred a couple years ago and kind of thrust me back into it was a, a flood in my studio. And wow. I was taking inventory of all my stuff. And I opened up some rolls of paper and they were the... Um, the, the plans for a new body of work that had similar similar marks um, as some of these, but they were a little bit more linear. And um, I looked at those images and you know, that's it. I need to I need to move forward. I need to move on to the next thing. Yeah. And um, move into this study of mark making, which links back to my installation work and such. And um, everything here you created during COVID. Pretty much, except for about three pieces. Mm. They're the dark, the dark. There are three dark blue pieces that were pre-COVID. I remember them. I visited your studio. I yes. remember those gorgeous blues. So tell me, let's start with this piece here. Okay. I want to hear about it. So this piece actually was one of the first bright, like very, very brightly colored pieces. Wow. And um, like those colors. It. It happened, that I, I, I choose the word happened because it, that, that's how this one worked. There, I came to it with the impression of colors, and in this case it was oranges, and still holding on to some of that blue. Yeah. And I just started mixing and adding the color to the canvas, and it, this was early spring, mm -hmm. when everything was blooming. Mm -hmm. And I respond, I respond pretty readily to nature. Yeah. So I'll walk, walk down the street and I'll see, or, or even just in my yard, something will bloom and I'll, and I'll go back into the studio and I'll play with that color a little bit. Yes. And, um, but this piece was, uh, it's, it's really just kind of, in a way, kind of a stream of consciousness way of painting where I didn't have an image in my mind. And that's similar with all, that's the same for all these pieces. I don't ex exactly have an image in my mind. Mm -hmm. I have a, a color impression. And so I start working on it. And I'll start with the main color that intrigues me. And then in this case, uh, it was these it was these oranges, you know. And, and then I'll start building and I'll start adding complementary colors. And then I'll start uh, to mute the colors a little bit here and there just so that there's, uh, there's some depth. I love that. The sense of depth I think you achieved here. I mean, I've seen your work before and your work is just gorgeous, but I think these these pieces to me as because I, I you know, I love colors and I play with it a lot. I think your the, the way you're uh, harmonizing them and the way you control them, the muted and the vibrant, it really it creates a composition that is really strong. It's really strong. Thank you. It's thank you. That that means a lot coming from you. <laughs> I am, um, even though these are abstract, still as, as you know, the same the same rules apply as mm -hmm. as one would use for uh, realism, where you always want depth. You always want somewhere for the eye to play and yes. for the eye to linger and kind of move around and explore, even if the, even if the viewer is not conscious of it. Yes. If, if you've got to have depth or the absence of it in a way that is uh, thought provoking. Yes, exactly. What about this piece behind you? Wow, it's, uh, this is really a powerful piece. This piece was late in the summer, and it feels like it. <laughs> it does. It was wow. like late July, August, and um, 
I was playing, I was simplifying color down to this most, most essential elements. Um, mm -hmm. Just going through the colors in the way that they appear in the rainbow, mm -hmm. so to speak, or in the color spec or in the color spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, this is, these are the widest strokes I had made to date. You know, I, this, this, this is so, these strokes to they're me, big. they're, they're so, <laughs> they're, just, I, no, they're, no, no, they're, they're they're brave because this is like a one-time thing. Like when you do a stroke like that, you can't yes. really, it's either you get it or you don't in yes. a way. There's no going back. There's, there's no going back. It's almost it's kind of like watercolor. You know, when you do a wash, either it's good or not. Yes. And with this piece, every, every stroke looks so confident. Yes, had, had to be in this. And these kind of paintings, I, I do a lot of uh, planning mm -hmm. for them as opposed to the one we just spoke about. Uh, this one had a lot of planning. It wasn't a stream of consciousness per se, but but the um, the genesis of this painting was kind of was just me playing with the color, playing with the color uh, variations, and seeing where they lead me. And when you say planning, you mean like you do small sketches? I do. Um, if we should we go over? I'll show you. Some yes, of where, where, please. Where I started. I start with these. So um, oh, these, are, wow. these are works on paper, and so the, this is how I ideate. And not and um, not to do because these are paintings in their own. Mm -hmm. But this is how I ideate. I'll sit. I'll I'll put together the the colors that I want to use, mm -hmm. and I'll just play with them. And in this case, I was I, I can't remember what intrigued me about just the steps of color, but I was really hooked on that at this point in time. And um, maybe it's in a way the implied logic. So some in in some of your steps, the steps are kind of logical, you know, going from light to dark in the same kind of family. But then you have some unexpected ones, like this one right here, yes. where it's just it's it's unexpected. What what did you try? Was there any different thought process here? And also the texture here is different. It's very cool. I I must have just been inspired to put blue there. That just to see, else. just to see needed, what happens, it just, right? It just needed something else, and I started, of course, tilting, tilting the, um, the tool that I make these marks with, and um, playing with that sort of tipping feeling. And in this case, I just needed it. Need, it needed blue, and also complementing this orange. Mm -hmm. so the thing is, is that actually thinking through it, I'm sh um, when I put the magenta over the yellow, it made orange, and of course, the complement of orange is blue. Mm -hmm. And that creates a vibration yes. and, uh, of color. So vibration. I, I that's, love that. that. The vibration is, is a, they're kind of pul pulsating, right? Is that the word? Yes. The artworks yes. are pulsating. Like they have heartbeat with your color combinations. I want to know a little bit about this, this quiet, nice. this quiet this, artwork here. This one is quiet. And... Um, same same period of time as as the as when we were talking about orange with blue line mm -hmm. and um, in the same the same color so I was doing this at, at the same time in the studio it's, so oftentimes I'll have I'll have multiple canvases in process on my walls and if I have uh, if I have a lot of a certain color um, I, I'll just I'll just play on a normal font and number right. of canvases at the same time. And, uh, and then they'll talk to each other, which is nice. Then they'll, then they'll, they'll create another harmony. So, um, yes. You so. work with uh, acrylic. Yes, these are acrylic on linen. And the pieces that you see that are framed are acrylic on linen. Um, but I trimmed them out because I've, I have fun playing with... There's that depth that we discussed. Mm -hmm. And then having a, the contrast of the hard hard cut edge. Mm -hmm. So I razor I razor cut these so it's really, really nice and crisp. And then they're floating on the um, on the board. Yeah, I love that you do that. I love that you do linen work and it's framed like a watercolor piece. It just takes you know because you know work on canvas or linen in this case could be sometimes kind of rough mm -hmm. or kind of I don't know heavy in a way. And yes. when you frame them the way you do, floating like that, they just they breathe. Oh, look at this wall, how gorgeous. Did you did you arrange this like that, or you and Christopher, Christopher together? And we did it together? It's it probably took forever because it's like a crazy collage. Yes, How to put right? He hung it. Yeah, wow. He, he deserves the credit. That's beautiful. Yeah. We had originally planned it as a grid of six, and then I, 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 I
I delivered the pieces and we put them on the floor. And Chris was like, no, I think we've got to go nine. Nine, big, no, it's... Big impression, which I think was the best it's, choice. It's, it balances yeah. the two large paintings. And... There is a piece here that is... I looked at it before. It reminds me, I mean, abstract work, there's always... Oh, it looks like, it looks like, yes. right? Yes. And to me, if I also go with that type of thinking, it, it feels to me like a, 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 a night, a night time with just bursts of city lights coming from, you know, from the top, from the oh, side. Uh -huh. And so there's a lot of just excitement. It's a, there's some life in this piece. It's kind of hard to see with the reflection. It's, it's, Maybe it's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah it is beautiful. Thank you, Vasilius. <laughs> Someone is saying it's beautiful work. Serious. Um, so let's hear about let's hear about this piece here, right here. This one. Okay. So this is part of I, I, I the painting that we talked. The first large painting we talked about was the first of what I'm what I'm calling variations. And chromatic um, variations. Yeah. I'm yes. sorry. I didn't even mention okay. it. The name of the show is Chromatic Variations. Yes. Everyone. Yes. So this was the first one. And um, and these these two followed, and then I made this other large one, which we can, which we can talk about in a minute. But these um, I, I since I since the first one had the kind of step and repeat layout, I wanted to play with with uh, um, overlapping shapes mm -hmm. in a different in a different manner mm -hmm. um, that would that would feel that would give a static feeling and also give a feeling of movement and depth. Mm -hmm. So, like this red one gives a very static feeling in a way, but then when it's superimposed on the other layers of paint, it begins to dissipate and create. What's dissipate? Like disappear it, in a it way? It begins to becomes... um, kind of kind of disappear. Yes. Okay. Like um, yeah, di disappear, and it starts to integrate with these other these other uh, large uh, planes of color. That's really the, the color combination here and what the color, the, uh, what the colors, what they do to each other in this piece is just so fascinating. What happens there with this harmony, how this is so clean and separate, just solid color. And then here you have just layers and layers and layers of different hues together. That's and, beautiful. And one of the things that I was, that I was striving for was having having the effect of complementary colors without them muddying one another up. You know? mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so of course you, you put red and green together and they become mud, but here, the way I layer, layered up the, the paint, you can see it's almost like a fabric, it's almost like a woven fabric of, of yeah. colors, of individual threads yeah. in a way, rather than um, the color just becoming mixed. That's, you know what, you, now that you say that, it does look like, like silk scarves, like thin, silk fabric layers on top of each other and you created it just by your very careful strokes i mean careful they're they're they look like they're, they're just confident but wow this is just amazing and i love this section here this is really gorgeous the calm yes There's really calmness yes in there. yes now let's see this one here this is this, this one has a lot different. more emotion yeah. Why? Why do you, do you, did you, were you feeling that? Were you feeling emotional when you're working in it? You sometimes, you know, sometimes yeah. you just work on something, you know, yeah. when you're angry, then mm -hmm. you're like, ah, oh, man. This one, um, it, it just, you know, there's, a, there's always a lot of emotion. Honestly, for me, it's like, I think, I think every, I think everybody has a lot of emotion generally, but I think a lot as, as artists, we, we, we tap into it in a different way. We have to tap in, or at least for myself, I have to tap into it in this way. Otherwise, it'll come out in other ways. <laughs> this is the best way. <laughs> so, but um, you know, this one, this one has a, it's it definitely has its passion, and in the 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 upper half, there is an uneasiness and a passion, and I don't I don't like to tell people. What I think when I make my work, mm -hmm. I, these these works are a sounding board for myself when I'm making them, mm -hmm. and like a, a, a catharsis, if you will. And um, I want to I want people to look at this work and have their own their own uh, passive silent moment and right. their own uh, catharsis, if you will, or even just their own. 
calm. So, which is why it named these pieces chromatic variation one, two, three, four, five, and I don't, I don't incorporate any clues as to what my um, inspiration was. Right. You know, yes. Some of these were inspired by jogging and seeing daffodils, and I had to, I had to capture that color, but I'm not going to name them daffodils because I want people to come to it with their own feeling. Right. So, so you're saying you're not selfish with your names. I'm. I could be selfish with my artwork. So I'm like, this is an angry artwork. Now you all get angry. <laughs> no, you're allowing people to feel what they want and interpret it the way they see it. Um, I want to, uh, I want to, would you kindly come here? Yes. Oh my God, this is so beautiful when you just stand here. I'm standing here in the middle of the gallery and I'm just showing you how gorgeous everything looks like together. Um, well, this piece, what about this piece? This is large. What's that? 50 by 44. Chromatic variations, number five. It's beautiful. Thank you. This one is uh, this one is where the, that woven feeling, that woven woven effect is yes. the strongest out of all, all the paintings. And um, and also this is one where that stroke, that one stroke, the chance to do one stroke and do it right. Yeah. Um, was the this was and the one where it showed the most because this this, this red stroke was uh you know it's, you do it once but yeah. but that red stroke adds a fire to this piece that is this piece has a, a cool quality to it a lot of people have compared it to um to scuba diving and you know, yeah the deepest part of the ocean. like underwater feel yeah it's it's interesting because it does feel so much like underwater but it also feels like fire at the same so it's like the dilemma, it's like a paradox of fire and ice together and it works and they blend in so, so peacefully almost in the middle. So I think that's, that's really interesting how you, how you merge the temperatures of the, of the feel of the up and down. Wow. Thank you. So that's, that's well, well said. Um, just um, as, a, as an artist myself, I'm curious from a technical uh, aspect, when you, when you do a, a larger brush stroke like that, do you allow it to fully dry before moving on to the next brush stroke or you're impatient like I am? It depends. It depends on what it is. Most of the time I'm impatient, um, but I also keep uh, dehumidifiers in my, in my studio so that I can work faster. Oh yeah. So when I when I That's do interesting. These really, really broad strokes, they're very thin, so they will dry really fast. And then there will be parts that didn't dry. Like for example, I I I put this red on when the magenta wasn't wasn't dry. It, you know, then I knowing that I would get this effect somewhere, but it's okay because sometimes it's nice to have a have a have the tool pick up right. the color that's underneath it. Yeah, it's a little bit more activity. Yeah, but um, but some of these some of these I allow to to dry but not for very long. So I noticed some, uh, in some places you allow the paint to be thick and we're yes. seeing there's actual texture, like thick texture. I'm not going to touch it, but it's right there. There's texture here. Mm -hmm. um, and some other places you want it to be completely smooth. Like this is like mirror, like it's just so smooth. Do you, do you kind of rent, are you, Allowing them intentionally to remain thick at places. Yes, the bead. I love. I love to use the bead as I just call the it. Bead the bead is that. Mm. Yeah, I just. That's a good. I didn't think about that, but that's a, exactly it, what it, it is. It grabs your eye. Yeah. It makes sure I stop for a moment. Yeah. And then, but at the same time, I also really like these pools of color um, because it almost it does almost feel like a pool to me, um, like a pool of water. Yep. And it, it's all, it all depends on the angle of, the, of, of my tool, how, how heavy the paint applies, and also how much medium I put in it. I use, I use a lot of gloss medium. Ah, because because I love the shine. I think it's really important for, for especially the magenta and the red to have a really nice sheen and pop. And I could also go back to my, I was in the beauty industry for many years. Really? And, well, that's why you're so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But wow. it, could, it could definitely go back to that, um, basically dealing with lipsticks and nail polish. Yeah, it kind of stays with the aesthetic, so something yes. that is shiny is attractive to yes. you. Yes, yes. But you know, I have to tell you, you're saying, glo you're saying glossy, but I do not, but I, I, the, the glossiness of your work is 
kind of elegant. It's not, it's not a, a, a mirror, which mm-hmm. I, I, to me, I feel like sometimes to me is just a little, could be a bit distracting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like the finish that you have here is almost like satin, maybe. Yes. Finish, I like that. And I, I change, I vary the, the finish, one. the piece, the piece over there, the large piece for my variations one. Um, the layers that are in the background, they are matte. They're matte and satin. Ah. And then I allow the, the fuchsia to be gloss. That's interesting because so. I did not notice that. And most people, you know, probably don't notice that. Mm-hmm. But it just gives you, it adds, it adds such uh, depth without, without even realizing it. You're adding depth. That's, and that's, that's what we do. That's, with yes. That's, we, we, we definitely don't expect, I would never expect the viewer to uh, understand how or what, how I did this. But right. I just want the viewer to be part of the, the experience. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's a, for, for me, my experience is making it. And I would never put if, if anything out in the world that I didn't like and I didn't enjoy. So, so every all the piece. Little details are yeah. just sort of little things that we use to. Uh, focus or I guess attract the eye in certain ways and move the eye, you know, in other ways. You know, this wall behind you that is just so magnificent to me, it feels to me that your work has very, is very musical. Like every piece feels like it's just musical. That's what it, that's what comes to mind. And I don't know, I'm looking at this piece here. That's very cool. What do you think about this piece? What's your you you went very different. Usually your your lines are usually hori- horizontal, right? This Correct. piece you kind of went a little wild. I did. Yeah. Well, what was the what was I'll the be, mood? I'll, sometimes I'll be working in the studio and I'll, I'll I'll get in just like we always do with life. I'll get into the habit of doing all horizontal lines. Right. And I'll get irritated at myself. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know the feeling. You're like, no, let's try go against what I want to no, do. <laughs> so then I start. Then I start. You know. Oh, throw caution to the wind. <laughs> when, and when you're in the studio, sometimes it's a really big deal. It's hard. It's hard to make yourself do it. And then you stand back and you realize, I needed to do that, and that felt good. And it, um, there's an unexpected result. And um, you know, I think, I think it was a Helen Frankie Fowler quote that she said that an unexpected ending has an unexpected path. So hmm. You don't want to be making the same thing all the time. So right. you need to be able to dip your toe into into dangerous territory. Look at it here. <laughs> yeah, it is very dangerous right there. <laughs> but it's really, I think it's critical for us to um, to keep yourself inspired in the studio. As artists, we always need to make stuff, but we may not be inspired to be in the studio. And so I think having the desire to make stuff and feeding it by finding ways to really want to still be in the studio is, is critical. How, how, how many hours a day do you find yourself working in a studio? It depends. Um, but over the last six months, it's been... I think I'll just preface with that. Over the last <laughs> six months, it's been like anywhere from six to 10, 12 hours a day. Wow. So wow. it's been, been busy. And I've been... Uh, and of course, our... There will be a couple of days here that I don't blend at all because I'm a, I'm a wife and mom. So <laughs> I've got things, yeah. and things I have to do. But if um, I, I think I think a full day is important. And if you don't get into this, if you don't get into the studio for a number of hours, it's important to at least go in for an hour and do play with something in the studio. How do you? I'm curious from. Um from a, a, a productive, you know, being artistically productive every day. It sounds like you are, you know, with, with, you know, having kids and all, you know, still putting so much work in a studio. When you start, how do you warm up? Hmm, that's a good question. I warm up by cleaning. Oh, yeah? Oh, man, I wish. I'm I so up, jealous. I warm up, I warm up by house, making more of I never clean up at the end of, at the end, usually the end of, end of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning for me. So I'm, that by that, I'm beat, like, I'm not laying anything up. But, um, and so then the morning I come in and I, I'll scrape down all my palettes and I'll scrape down my palette knives because everything's covered. And, um, and that's one way of how I warm up. But if I'm feeling particularly blocked, I'll get, um, I'll cut paper and I'll start doing, start doing those exercises and I'll have, yeah, these oh, are, 
These are great ways. Of those. And there's a lot of freshness there. Yes. And because I'll do the same thing that I was doing with the marks. I'll do it with color and I'll make myself use a color that is not a color I particularly feel like using that day. Oh and yeah? Is it a daily thing? One day you don't... Because I see pops of green that some days you do not even look at. Correct. Correct. And green is, is my nemesis. I, I, oh, I'm with you. Um, you know what I just heard? I just heard it's that... Gre- I know, I know. <laughs> that green is... The human eye sees the, the most amount of, uh, of green. We see the most shades of green because it's a survival thing. So we are, we are the most, our eyes most sensitive to shades of green, which blew my mind. And I also hate green tremendously, but you're able, I, and, and I try to use it because, as right, you said, exactly. it's your nemesis, but you're like, I'll, I'll use you, my nemesis. Yes, here I am tricking myself to use green, but I'm really... Yeah, I, it's very I, tricky. I, I, I love, I, I can, I'm, I have a lot of experience mixing color, but for this, for me, it's because of my the stubborn side, where I... The, the green is just simply a result of, of putting the blue over the yellow in this case. When so. you say you have um, experience mixing colors, what is it has to do with your beauty in, uh, industry a little bit maybe? First, my mom. My mom's a painter, and so I grew up next to her. What and kind of art does that. she do? Well, she's done a lot of different things, but now she's, now she's not making her art much anymore. But at the time, she was doing portraiture, mm-hmm. and she's doing large portraits of families, and so in our, in our kitchen. And so she put a little canvas next to her canvas for me, and I, she'd have me mix paints and paint next to her. And then she's always somebody, she's a colorist, big colorist, and so she's always talked about, well, this needs a little bit more blue, and going to the paint store to paint it, to get paint for our house was always a nightmare, but <laughs> because, because she always knew what exactly to add to the paint. Um, so there's, so I grew up around that, and then of course, undergrad and grad school and in grad school I was working with the color color of light uh, in my installation work so it gave me a different sort of perspective on color and then um, and then over the last few years I've been teaching and I've been teaching often a lot of people who have never painted before Mm -hmm. and so in giving them programs to actually learn how to mix color it's definitely uh, caused me to you know take things to another level for sure. Teaching is fantastic, right? I just, Vasilius, my, uh, my friend who's watching right now, is, uh, he used to be my teacher at FIT, oh, my nice. mentor. Okay. And uh, we just talked this week about how teaching makes you better at what you do because it forces you to, to get better at it and to practice it and to talk about it. Yeah, do you feel yeah, that way? Absolutely. Teaching is, is p- pushing you artistically, even if you teach people that are, you know, just starting, right? Absolutely. I, I teach people who are just starting, and, and now, um, yes, I teach people who are, who are both, both experienced and, and uh, new. And it's for, for one to figure out a way to express how someone should approach making artwork. You have to, it really puts put you in, in, in their shoes yes. and, it, and it helps you question your everyday, everyday processes and your, and just what you assume and take for granted. Right. And so you revisit every solitary process that you have in your studio because you have to verbalize it. And for yes. those of us who are, I've always been pretty, just in my studio, I'm not nonverbal doing what I'm doing and that's it. It's all inside my head and to take it out of your head and, and communicate it in a way that someone else would understand this is something else. So. Well, um, it's, a, it's a, maybe a weird question to ask because maybe you're still working on this body of work, but do you think that you will continue in this palette that you have here right now that's very vibrant, it's very rich? Or do you, do you feel... Why do you ask that? <laughs> because I know, because I... Good timing. It's also, I feel like, kind of, you, you have artistically, and, and I know your work a little bit, you know, from before, the different mm-hmm. bodies of work, and it's kind of waves, so it's like you have a wave of, of, of vibrant yes. color, and then you yes. may get into just monochromatic, just mm-hmm. gray, everything gray. Yes. Do, you, do you maybe expect that to happen to you right now, this or? Has <laughs> been, it's been a, a mix, of, forget the pun, but it's been... So I've been working on a, on a, on a special project uh, where 
I, my idea was a completely different color scheme, and it was the color scheme of skin tones. And wow, I, so, uh, skin tones is something I've never seen at your work. Oh, so, actually, actually, let, let me just cut you off quickly because it's a good thing to say, is that when I visited your studio, you had one, the, the nude the figure that I told you was very <laughs> inspiring to me, mm -hmm. the palette that you use there. So when you say skin tones right now, I'm sorry, please continue. No, and it's just, the piece is just reflective on this past year and all of the activity with, um, with Black Lives Matter and just everything that has come up about acceptance mm -hmm. and bias. So mm -hmm. um, this piece is based on that, but that's, it, that, that piece is uh, being done for a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but now that uh, that piece, so I did that, worked on that piece right after doing these, and now getting back into this, this train of thought, so to speak, I... Um, started making similar marks and layers and then I've just gone over them with glue. Mm. And it happened a couple nights ago. So that's gonna be a brand new palette for you. It, the the it, harmony it is kind of different. in a way coming back to in a way where I was a year ago and I, my my response to the seasons and the cold and and uh, what's going on around with, around me? It, it, it's interesting, but yes. So it's um, so I'm layering blue, and I'm adding I'm adding more more layers often to where it becomes almost black, but it's got so many layers that it's just very deep. I love that. I love when when you mix many 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 colors to you achieve like black, and then you get such rich black. It, it's and then it looks so much better than when you put like industrial, you know, black yes. next to it. You're yes. like, wow, my black is so much better. And, absolutely, because then it, there, there are variations here and there. Yes. And it just gives gives your eye a little feast of, of color or you know mysteriousness, and, and it's just that's just fun. So it's in, so good timing on that question. <laughs> wow, I'm excited to see it. So um, when so so you're at the gallery this month until when? Till November twentieth. And uh, many of the pieces have been sold already, so congratulations. Thank you. I envy the new clients that are going to have those babies on their walls because they're so beautiful. They're really cool, and I'm so happy that uh, you are not only you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing, but you keep developing it. So it's like you have your specific style, but it, it, you freshen it up all the time because you need it like you need to see like fresh ideas but you keep your language like your you know you keep saying marks the, yes. the word I use like you mark making which to me um, um, to, to, to me when I work I think about shapes I don't think marks but I like when you say marks it is uh, it is interesting to see how you how you approach it and how every every mark as you say is meaningful Yes. Because it's there, Because, for example, in this piece here, by Vasilius, one of the guests. Um, um, this piece, for example, your marks, each one of them is just so, I mean, every, every piece of yours, obviously, but this one specifically, every mark is so intentional and so thoughtful. For example, this just red on the top, just the thin line of thick, thick, thick paint. I think it's very cool. Yeah, I felt like that, and, and when I do that, I, I tend to do that a lot where I'll add a, a brilliant element just on the edge. And, yeah, um, and that doesn't fight with uh, what's inside, correct. but it adds some richness to it. Correct, correct. I mean, it, it you know, thwarts some traditional ideas of composition, but, you know, <laughs> it, it needed this little bit of red. I felt it, like, no, yeah, it, so. it, without that red, it wouldn't have been as strong as it is right now. Something unexpected. Is, yeah, exactly. And we love the unexpected. Yes. Wow. Well, um, Rachel, my dear friend, you are so talented and I am Thank just you. honored to stand here and talk to you about your beautiful work. And um, we will see you at, uh, what's the name of the, the art? Art Show Bedford. Art Show Bedford yes. in a couple of months. Yes. And I'm excited to be there with you, hopefully. Absolutely. So and we, you, yeah, I'm going to be some local artists from um, Westchester. And uh, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you. you. Thank you. You are so, you are so amazing, and uh, we are all inspired to see your work. I am, at least. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you.